Oh, yeah, here we go. Hippie coming in on left in blue. Bringing around the third US onward. Team in place on the right. In red, bringing in 8th infantry. In this final of the Swiss style format, is like the basic, basically the final of this. As both sides bring in the US, as you can see the bands on the Soviet heavy divisions and on 7th Panzer, so packed really heavily thinned out. That's why we ended up with 3rd US and 8th infantry here. As the map is Depro, the remaining maps for game number 2 will be Vertigo and Black Forest. And it's gonna be interesting. Hippie had a uh, uh, first pick, human players had the counter pick. And yeah, the standings currently are looking as follows. Uh, both players have won all three matches, but Team and Place didn't win all games. He had a draw in the second match against Quantix, so he is having slightly fewer points than Hippie. So if these two players draw, Hippie will have a better score than Team and Place, and that means Hippie will win. So Team and Place needs a victory here. Hippie would be fine with a draw. In, so if both get one map, Hippie would win the tournament. So Team and Place with a slight disadvantage in that regard. So has to play absolutely on win. If they draw one map, win, and, and then uh, Team and Place wins the other, he still wins. Uh, it's just that he needs the, the match victory. As, yeah, this should be quite the match. Really looking forward. Also, you can still sign up for the March version of the monthly tournament if you want to get yourself into it. And it starts next week. Uh, and, yeah, you can get yourself signed up there on playstl.com. And get yourself into the March Swiss style format. Open to any kind of skill level. And with the Swiss style format, you won't get eliminated. You will get your fair share of games. You will also get a fair share of uh, quite balanced games, as the rounds, the later rounds, are based on your previous results. So, yeah, Hippie versus Team in Place should be quite entertaining. Here we freaking go. Hippie bringing around his classic A cap start. Humvees, LRS. Lately, he played pretty standard, though. Uh, like, I feel like Lathans did more cheats lately than Hippie, which is disturbing, to say the least. Uh, even in the Friday night one or yesterday, he played relatively standard. So, yeah, I don't know what exactly happened to Hippie. Maybe we, he's in need of a new patch to find a new cheese. Looking forward to that once that comes around. And, yep, let's see. Two CPs coming around here in the rear. 50 cults, M60s on the other side. 8 infantry. Obviously not quite having the top end that 3rd US has, but they are more cost efficient. They have Fireteam Law, uh, they have the Mechanized Rifle Law, they have the M1 tank, they have the Cobras, like they have a lot more cost efficient stuff, but they don't quite have the top end, so if they let the enemy build up too much, if 3rd US can build up too much, Third years will have the advantage in most regards, outside of maybe long range AA, with the IHOC and big artillery. Those, uh, uh, as you have some 23mm guns in 8th, you still have that advantage in those regards at the moment. But in general, uh, Third US with Apaches, with F-15s, with the M1A1 HAs has the bigger late game, so should be quite interesting. And LRS scouts and so on coming around here. Pivots coming around as well. Uh, LRS is over here. LRS obviously great because it has the ground surveillance radar. Um, something that in the near future should be a bit more widespread. As Eugen is planning on giving every nation, not every division necessarily, but every nation at least one unit with ground surveillance radar. So, gonna, uh, looking forward to see how they will be implemented in the French, the um, the East Germans and the Soviets, which currently don't have them yet. In general, Recon Tap should get a quite a bit more exciting with snipers also getting implemented, as the building of the Recon Taps will start to vary a good bit 
once that happens. <laughs> Happy is going over to the rebel states, it seems. Giving up his Britishness here. Saying that he was born in the USA. Trying to get me an earworm at the same time. And I've tried to resist it. No promises, chat. No promises I will be able to keep resisting this. Um, it's not quite as bad as naming yourself Wo, I'm halfway there. That was still Tiger's evil, um, m most evil move. <laughs> no, Tiger's. Tiger's evil move. In <laughs> Skill Division 2 team tournament. I believe it was the 3v3 tournament. Where I had a constant earworm of Bon Jovi. And yeah, well, let's see. Hippies here all around. Hippie seems to be ready. Seems to have some air. Okay. So yeah, I I said he is disturbingly low on cheese lately. And what is Hippie doing? Getting himself some A10s here. Ready to go. Like, there is for sure an air tap here. Um, I believe maybe two A10s even? An F15? Potentially two A10s and no F15? Or one A10 and one F15? It's not super cheap what he has on the ground here. The, like the LRSs cost you 90 points, so that's like yeah, this is like 600 points. That's an, like yeah, no one one a ten, I guess it is. Uh, uh, or and one f fifteen. I would guess not two f fifteens. No Apaches. Other side, a good couple of stingers and IHawk coming in early as well. That can ruin the day there for hippie. Potentially. Issue is, IHawk only has three missiles, and starting it without a supply truck means that it will have to hit. Otherwise, it might be useless. And here we go. Let's see, guys. Hope you did gamble your points away. As we are going into a really, really hot match. Let's freaking go. A tenth on the bolt. Yeah, that was to be expected. Question is, what is the second plane? But as we don't see a second thunderbolt, I would expect an eagle out there. Maybe it's not even quite enough left for eagle. Really, a lot of recon. Um, MLR and the LRS on the other side unloading. We have a good couple of stingers. One stinger, one eye hawk hit. Would ruin that A tenth day. Question is, can the IHawk get out in a decent enough angle with a de decent enough open field in front of it? It should unload here. Yes, that's what it's doing now. Oh! A10 trying to find it. Doesn't find it though. Pivot is engaging as well. IHawk misses all shots. Classic. Ah, recon helicopter got smoked over here. I believe that ruined the A10's day there on trying to target the, pivot, the IHawk. Um. Gets hit by a stinger in the end. Okay, but yeah, if the IHawk would have hit one missile, that would have been the end of that A10. A10 though, pretty uneventful. And that, I would say, leaves human players with a slight initiative, initiative edge. With the shutdown of the recon helicopter and so on. Like he for sure has a good bit more combat units here. Rangers, fire team lore, a couple of Kanoniak Panzers, a mech rifle. It's not overwhelming, as he also has a lot of stuff invested into AA, and he has way fewer recon units, though. Like, he has four versus, I believe, six or maybe even seven on the side of Hippie. So, yeah, the combat values on his side a bit higher. Kanoniak Panzers M60 is coming in as well. Also, obviously, his AA will be effective all the way through. Uh, it's... At least as, as soon as the IHOC is reloaded. M1A1 coming in here. Fire team, River Bradley rolling in as well. And that should be quite interesting. Oh, Hippie on a classic Hippie move. It wouldn't be a Hippie game if it wouldn't be a scout and an ACAF trying to get into the rear of the enemy. Scouts over here holding the line. Engineer Flash moving around. Kanoniak Panzer moving forward as well. Fire team. 84 over here, engaging the LRS, mech rifle moving forward. MR 13A3 coming around here as well. LRS moving forward. 
Supply truck will arrive here at the IHOC soon. M60 A3 coming in nicely as well. Mech rifles coming in nicely. M1 A1 Abrams for the other side as well. So the Abrams fights will be real. What's the LRS here? Is slowly getting messed up by an M113 A3. Some mech rifles, some fire teams. That LRS will lose the fight, but it will take a good while until it is finished. Kanon Panzer helping out as well. LRS trying to get the hell out of there. Let's see how well that will go. Scout under fire. Once we have M113 A3 A calves slowly moving around the north. The last time we saw this map uh, with a hippie gameplay on was against Tiberius Rancor. There he had an A calf in the rear of the enemy as well. Um, over here. Oh yeah, exactly where this guy is going. Yeah, that's the classic hippie spot. Um, it did kill one transport back then, but it got dealt with relatively quickly. Let's see how reactive team and plays us. Team and plays also trying to get a Kanon Panzer behind enemy lines. Interesting as well. Kanon Panzer is in the north. Really good support unit here. Can deal a good amount of HE. Have an MG3 as well to do some damage there. They obviously not the biggest damage dealers, but they're pretty cheap and they're armored, so soft weapons can't deal any damage to them. Once the AKF is getting into a spot. M60 A3, getting the LRS. LRS on the fire. M1A1 has arrived on the front line on the other side. We have only an M60 currently. As another M1A1 is coming in though, an M10, 110 already out on the battlefield. So some big artillery here. Let's see if team and place can make that one work. As if that maybe gets some good damage onto the CP or so, it could be good. Hippie is still someone who uses the mats, uh, even though they are really low hit point and really no, uh, no armor whatsoever, so artillery still can destroy them. Just needs to get on target. M60A3 gets a nice shot. And when a one continues to be there, ACAF is aiming up, is firing, is killing the supply drug. Big question is, yes, team in place immediately sees that. Helicopter would be really helpful to deal with that. Um, yeah, Chaparral needs to evade that position. Can only act Panzer actually made it into a decent spot as well. Can shoot up Bradley's from there. But a decent counter push here from Hippie in the south. Coming up. It's no fire out of the one MR10 yet. Okay. We'll see if the next investment here. Yeah. Tow Cobra coming in. That's what I expected. Bradley's Stingers coming around. Ihawk is reloaded. Oh, Tow 2. Ooh, that would have dealt a lot of damage. Tow 2 versus M1 Avron. Really deadly. And then the M60 potentially could have done something about it. M60 now engaging. M1A1 smoking off. Getting the hell out of there. Another M1A1 coming up. But this time, four team in place. One has arrived in the south, and yeah, it, it's gonna be Abrams versus Abrams. But Team in Place has to keep up the pressure. As if he doesn't keep it up, uh, Hippie's late game most likely will overwhelm him. Kanoniak Panzer gets eliminated by the Bradley. Okay, that's not great. As it didn't get a single kill there. No, didn't get any kills on the road. Unfortunate. Another tow 2 coming up. Whilst well, mech rifles try to deal with the M1A1 here. Kanon Panzer Shooting up infantry. M1A1 might try to deal with that. But then there is an M1A1 on the other side as well. And the M1A1 off Hippie not hitting. One of two in place is hitting though. So Hippie it's just engaging there. Doesn't want to take that fight for a good reason. Engineer Flash versus Engineer Flash. A nice mirror match as well there. Rangers can be quite helpful, but not if they get stunned down by Flashes immediately. And Hippie just having way more infantry down here. Will overwhelm the Rangers a good bit. Toe has to be careful. The Toe Cobra. Not too, too much infantry around here. Uh, Ekev has arrived in the north as well. Hasn't killed anything yet because everything is moving through the slightly more southern road. So the ACAF 
is not seeing any opponents there. Scout is in a weird spot as well. Doesn't really see much there. But potential to get behind enemy lines and start seeing something. M110 still hasn't fired. That's a big investment into something that doesn't shoot. It's 280 points. More than a minute of income there. Early invested by team in place and then not using it. It's quite surprising. But we have M109s on the other side. Slowly rolling in. 36 rounds in this 155mm. M60. Trying to deal with the LRS. Not quite doing super much damage yet. Oh, Toe 2? Yeah, you have to disengage out of there. The other Toe 2 still has a good couple of missiles as well. M1A1 here could come a bit further forward. But team in place, not getting the breakthrough just yet. Oh. Kanoniak Panzer versus Rangers. Oh, Engineers getting eliminated by the Kanoniak Panzers though. So that's quite unfortunate there for Hippies Infantry. Good combined arms here by team in place. And the Bradleys now have to be careful. As the infantry around them starts dying. More 10 still without a shot fired. ACAF relatively low on a fuel as it moved so long through the deep forest. Well, it arrived in the spot it needed to arrive in. Tow Cobra slowly moving around as well. Oh, 8, 10, a Thunderbolt coming in here. Pivot and IHOG. Uh, yeah, trying to engage. Recon helicopter down. Oh, good hit there. Uh, no follow-up shot just yet. Oh my goodness, A10 on one hit point. Yeah, the Chaprawl actually it was. Okay, yeah. It would have been an IHOG. That thing would have been dead. Chaprawl still dealing decent damage, but not quite allowing for the kill in the end. So, human players will escape with that heavily damaged plane. M1A1 and mech rifles coming in here. So... Yeah, the higher end of 8th cavalry and the standard, basically, of 3rd US. Well, 3rd US is starting to get a solid front line, and that's really, really not good for team and place. That's really not good for team and place. Mm -hmm. Nice kill with the M1A1 here. Team and place getting a nice shot up north. MR13 there goes down as well. M1A1 Abrams coming in. M110 aiming up on the LRS. Ooh, that would be juicy. Toe 2 in good spots. These missiles are in really good spots. Hippie has to be careful here. As. Ooh. Yeah, that Abrams is playing a dangerous game here. Toe 2 in front is out of ammo. The one over here still going around though. And if that hits, it gets the kill. M1A1 down for Hippie. Hippie has to be careful. M1A1 down here also goes down for Hippie. Hippie is struggling here in the south. Engineers slowly moving forward. M1A1. One more. The last one in the southern area of the map for Hippie. Still standing strong. Okay, that Bradley Vivid's Toe 2. Obviously a dangerous opponent here for any tank on the side of Team in Place as well. So Team in Place has to disengage. Hippie still has the infantry advantage down here. Good couple of engineers, flash and mech rifle with laws coming around though. And the wipe on the two M1A1s around here might allow some players of these two for team in place. As there's no direct Toe 2s on the other side. There's Red Lakes, but these can be killed off way quicker by a tank than the Toe 2 can. As they're just a one shot for the M1A1s. But the Toe 2 needs a couple of rounds to actually be killed off, especially if it's in a building. Resupply here would be nice. I'm surprised that team in place plays the long game. M110 though, starting to come in now. As it is, actually aiming on the Mac, uh, the MR13 in the north. That one got a kill on two vehicles this time. Two MR13s on the other side died, but ACAV now under fire. Tokobra actually coming around there as well. Bit unnecessary then to use the artillery, but it is what it is. Human place most likely somewhat frustrated there against that uh, by that play from Hippie. At least that's the emotion that it gets from me usually. And I see that those ACAVs happening. It's quite hard to stay just chilled when these things 
start to take away your real line units. Mech Rifle Law gets a nice shot on the M1 at 13A3. Doesn't quite kill it though. And more reinforcements are necessary for the self here. For team in place to keep up the dominance down there. North, pretty good. Center. Hmm? I would say team in place has the advantage here. But Hippie is not getting pushed here. And as long as Hippie doesn't get pushed, 30 US obviously has an easy road ahead in the late game. With M1 A1H Ace as they come in now. With the Apaches. With solid planes. Uh, artillery that is decent, not fantastic. Good amount of Bradleys with infantry. And like the late game of 30 US is potentially the best in the game, I would say. At the current state. 79 potentially uh, like might be better. But I would argue it might be 30 US. Stingers going down. As the M109 continues firing, M110 once more turned off. As the M109 does try to deal the, with the mech rifles, fire team law engaging here. Fire teams under really, really heavy fire need to be dealt with. As the 84 fire team there gets out of the building, mech rifle under fire now by some artillery as well. Ooh, good hit there. By the artillery. Mike Rifle's dropping some hit points. Ah, get close there. And the engineer flash and the Mac Rifle's over here need to be careful around this point as well. M1A1 goes down. As we have the HA slowly coming in. Toe 2 going forward as well. Stinger sitting around here. M sixty A three moving forward. But no movement in the north. And I like the team in place situation when it comes to trades lately. I believe he traded better. But the question is can he keep that up in the late game? When his opponent gets more stuff. And I fear he might not be able to do that. I fear he might not be able to do that, and that's a big, big problem. M1 13A3 coming around. And this is potentially uh, a big issue in the late game here for Team in Place. Uh, if he doesn't start to push Hippie in a, some uh, point up north or maybe out of the center. Or if he starts to really trade fantastically. Because then the M1 tents and so on can still carry you. And you can still. But as long as you. Just keep slightly ahead, then I would say Tippy should be able to turn that around later when he has more of his heavy tanks coming around than what team and place can keep up with. So, really needs to be careful here to keep up the pressure to not allow his opponent to uh, get too many of the heavy tanks. As if you get up against like four or five of these M1A1HA, supported by, or well, like even three. And then, uh, like, two or three more M1A1s around. It's really hard to beat, even with Toe 2s. Even with Toe 2s, stopping that is not easy. And more, you want to keep and kill them off one by one. Red least behind it, obviously, also problem. Like, the Toe 2s are the only thing that can deal with the M1A1 HA efficiently next to maybe Airplay. Which currently, actually, Hippie has not much counterplay against. No ship rolls on the battlefield, most likely an F-15 in, in, in his back, but that can be relatively easily dealt with with IHawks and maybe some F-16s. So eight hands coming out to deal with the M1A1HA when they come out into the open might be a way. Tow Cobra can be supportive, but um, the Ito is not dealing much damage there either. Scouts and the ACAB in the north got dealt with. And oh my goodness, that's a lot of Yak Panzers. I mean, they're dirt cheap, so it makes sense. And it seems like that is where Tumon Plays wants to put up the pressure. Seems like this is where he wants to mount the pressure. So let's see how that goes. Uh, as we have an ACAB on the other side trying to hold the line. 
good couple of scout units in the north fighting around M109 flying around here oh eagle coming in coming in for a toe cobra getting a nice check kill Ooh. Hawk trying to get a kill there as well. Not quite managing it though. Has a good couple of thunderbolts. Enter the battlefield. Ihawk still has a couple of missiles. We have stingers. We have a good amount of pivots. Pivots can't fire continuously. Instantly stun down the thunderbolt here actually. The thunderbolt can't get anything off. Pivots pretty good at that. They're not amazing at killing. They still do it though. And yeah, that's why I like pivots. Like against these slow birds, they actually are pretty functional. Three pivots and you just melt anything away. And with only 55 points for the pivot, they are pretty cost efficient. Like three of them killing one thunderbolt, already paid off. And the three of them killing two thunderbolts, really, really worth it. Uh, so yeah, good defensive there by team in place. But still has to find a way for the ground forces. Might be able to do so. Uh, do, uh, might, might have found that in the north right I don't know. Military police M67 is getting overwhelmed. Hippie is now getting fancy here. I'm not sure if it's already time for some shenanigans like that though. M1A1 CP moving around deep into the enemy territory. And that's a pretty risky move. And a pretty expensive one as well. And it most likely won't end up in super many points. Especially if he, the CV of Cuban Place does survive in the zone. Good smoke play though, as Team in Place wants to capture the one the zone of Hippie. Hippie has a CV there as well though, and we have a good amount of Dragon uh, Mech Rifles here, and Mech, uh, mech Rifle Laws, and yeah, good couple of Mech Rifles with M113A3 Dragons in the rear. Apache and Thunderbolt coming in again. Let's see what the Thunderbolt can do, but as I said, the pivot loadout is nice. Thunderbolt trying to deal with Kanoniak Panzers. That's not really efficient. And the Eyehawk does connect, and that's an instant kill there. Eyehawk, really fantastic from the rear. And Hippie in trouble. Plus two now for team in place. He's coming around from the side. Hippie needs to deal damage with this. If there's no damage dealt with this push, then Hippie is in a lot of trouble. Obviously, Apache can try to do some damage. Pivots will try to prevent it. Um, on the other side, there's a pivot as well against the Cobra. We'll stun it down relatively quickly. Cobra also has no armor, so the pivot in general should be quite efficient there. Uh, Cobra gets a couple of rockets out, gets stunned again though, and should be dead before it can do much more. Engineers moving forward. M1A1 CP coming in as well. Rangers need to get out there maybe. Currently, plus two for team in place. Uh, but Hippie might capture the rear. Down in the south. Continuous battle here in that southern forest, but not much movement, not many decisions here actively made strategically, as those team to be all north, as Hippie is now the one on the plus two, with the capture of Echo, CV needed there for human place, and obviously a kill of Hippie's units first. A10, Thunderbolt coming out on the other side now as well, but no Ihawks on the side of 3rd US. There a tap is a bit of the weakness. Chaprol nowadays though, really strong as well. So it's not as weak as it once was. Like the latest buffs to AA ranges really helped out the Chaprol and also helped out the Stinger a bit. So the Thunderbolt has a bit of a harder time nowadays. But it still can deal with enemy vehicles quite efficiently. A10 Thunderbolt flying around. So let's see if we will see more of this in the future. Oh, it actually stays around for now. I expected it to get out. That's not the case, actually. And Thunderbolt gets a kill here. As we have the M109 at the same time. Trying to hit some stuff up in the center, but on its own, it won't kill much. Only one M109. And it doesn't open up the battlefield for anything either. As there's just nothing here to follow this up once... It does stand on the enemy, like, yeah, M1, M60 here taking damage, M60 here even being stunned, but if you can't follow up the artillery with a tank push or so that can 
really use up that the enemy's damage that the enemy especially is stressed out then the m1 online is currently just not quite a unit for something like that they can still use the uh, be used to deal with toe 2s or something like that where stun is also pretty helpful and, but you also have the power to kill them um, but individually against tanks not fantastic team and plays now with another cv plus two still for hippie plus four actually for hippie in the moment here as he pushes out team has team and plays cv in the north apache there really helpful aa not quite in place and hippie actually with a nice point advantage yeah hippie trying to push in here lost a good command of tanks 60 minutes remaining thunderbolt flying around no tanks around here as we have a good de uh, defense and depth here for team in place really lured hippie in here and his m1a wants if they get a, get a side shot on the m1a1 ha still do absolutely fantastic damage the toe twos are fantastic as well and yeah, hippie a bit out of steam here hippie a bit out of steam so we might see team in place counter-attacking on the self fire team 84 coming in obviously still needs to capture points uh, we'll try to retake the north 300 points now for hippie that's not a hell of a lot but 15 minutes remaining that potentially could be rescued over that, that line potentially a advantage that might win Vic hippie the game but still a good amount of time to play and nothing that a good take uh, plus three take can't do in five minutes here so hippie still absolutely has to be cautious and can't overstep his welcome anymore as we have an A10A coming around to killing off LRS. Oh, doesn't quite spot the M1A1 there for some for some reason. Or oh, actually, he's going for the Apache. Apache goes down. Good kill there. Team in place with a good kill on the A10. F15 coming around on the other side. Does get one hit. Does get a second hit. Will be able to get the kill. But IHawk will try to retaliate. With the IHawk, would get a missile on target. That F15 would be dead. But it doesn't do that just yet. So F15 will survive, a 10 Thunderbolt on the side of human places down, but he got the Apache, he got one infantry unit, so it was still worthwhile in the end, especially thanks to the Apache kill. Whilst team place also has a decent amount of units in the south. MYR10 could try to snipe some stuff here, he's not trying to do that just yet though. Mortar, moving up north, uh, doesn't see anything there. Now, I like the mech rifle lower play here in the rear for team and place. Obviously, something with AT4s would be even nicer. Well, we have a CV coming in for team and place again on the plus two. Uh, these guys reveal themselves now. Firing a law, getting a kill there, but that's not really worthwhile. If they could find the CP here, that would obviously be massive. A10 Thunderbolt coming around. We'll try to kill off the mech rifle, but. Thunderbolt on the other side coming around, a lot of ground based AA, gets the A10 damage but loses his own A10, so Hippie is heavily bleeding at the moment, and the advantage that Hippie once had is starting to melt, plus two, will need uh, three more minutes before team and place will get start to get ahead in this, and he has 13 more minutes, so Hippie needs to do something about this plus two, and I'm not sure he can, I believe team and place actually kept the bleeding the traits just always that slight bit positive enough that hippie couldn't just uh, use the strength of the late game of 30s enough like he never got more than one m1a one ha out he never got a lethal amount of apaches that could do anything massive or anything like that out so yeah the a10 play didn't work i rock doing a fantastic job there and team and place really showing that he is really good with these uh, middle of the bunch divisions. Like his, I really love his seventh Panzer play. He's great with fifth clean day, and eight infantry also fit the suiting his playstyle really, really well. Thirty ninth, obviously, a, a division that has been there for a long while as well. Like those four divisions, uh, those all rounders that have pretty cost efficient stuff, but also can get some high end stuff like an M1A1, like an A10 out there. Those are the divisions that he shines with, in my eyes. A10 Thunderbolt here, coming around, trying to find some spots. We'll get on top of the M1A1 here. Smokes way too late. A10 gets the kill. No AA on the side of Hippie. Mech Rifles get the kill. Mortifier on the CP there. 
So, human place has to be careful. But, yeah, Mac Rifle Lore moving forward. Apache did move back. Oh, Mortar actually gets the kill there. Good job with the Mortar by Hippie. Or it might, no, yeah. Not sure if it was the Mortar or the M109. Might have been both a mix of both. Will keep Hippie in head for now, but Hippie really can't allow any more ticks now. Has to keep it stable. As we have an another CV coming in. This time it's a mech rifle leader. Nine hit points. Much harder to kill than these mutts. And that's going to be interesting. Okay, these pings are just to try to memorize where the enemy CV is. Hippie is using them quite uh, actively, usually, in his play. Patchy coming around. Bradley's coming around in the rear. Engineer Dragons still sitting down south. M1A1 there is opening up now. Team in place could potentially push the south down. And we might see that when he starts to feel the pressure a bit. He might just say, okay, let's, let's just roll. And with four M1A1s, Toe Cobra and a decent amount of infantry, I don't believe anything can stop him here. Like, there's not even a Bradley here. There's nothing with a Toe 2. There's no tanks whatsoever. So, Dragon Wands won't stop him. 84s <laughs> will have a really rough time to getting on position. And M67s also won't stop him whatsoever. So, Team in Place just needs to basically A-click in the south right now. But he is not feeling the pressure enough yet to attempt that. Instead, he's moving in with a lot of M60s and some M1s in the north, and yet yeah, the trades must be so insanely in favor of human place at this stage. Scouts going down, Apache coming in. Two of them, actually. Whilst we have some more mech rifle leaders coming in from the rear. Apache rocket hitting up the M1A1s and the M60s here. That's good. Only one pivot and the stinger around currently as AA. They don't really do it against the Apache. Well, it's the team in place is really efficiently playing here. Really playing well around Hippie's aggressiveness. Letting Hippie the field. Like, if Hippie wants to attack, he leaves it to him. And Hippie is running in there and just starts dying. Now Artillery tries to hit the mud here. Like, as long as team in place doesn't get his CV sniped too heavily... He should be in a good spot. Ooh, Macron leader has to be careful here. Bradley's trying to come around. He gets up to a plus two. And yeah, we just should see team in place down here now with a push and a kill. As this is getting absolutely out of hand here now. A10 Thunderbolt coming around in the north. Raffle trying to move around here. A10 coming in. We'll try to run for the Apache. He'll be able to get the kill. Bradley going down. Apache going down. And yep, Hippie has nothing left in the north. F15 coming around. Human place ticking up. Human place should be able to push into south as well. There is CV trying to get into the south? No, not yet. Fire team 84 is all there is there. And, no, I believe it might be laggy for everybody. Uh, I'm a bit sorry there. I tried on high. As I also just recognized that the stream was starting to be a bit rough. Apache coming in. Should be a smoother in a second. Uh, so we have the mech rifles moving around here. CP coming around. Mac Raffles in the south. M1A1 around. These should be able to move forward. O2. Thing over here. Next we have a good couple of dragons rolling in here. But Team in Place is now ahead in points. And yeah, soon we'll take enough have enough points that it will be a W for him. I don't see Hippie taking any more points. Gets another CV out. Um, his mat here will get repaired. As the M1A, uh, M110 tries to snipe it. 
Apache, still under fire by the pivot, has to get the hell out of there. M1A1 now moving forward. Pivot actually gets killed by the M150. So the Apache potentially could move back there, but no, more pivots are around, arriving. So that won't really work out. Supply vehicles here get killed. Pepe is trying to keep that CV alive. Still be doing a good job. 84 in the south versus fire team. Reversing mech rifles. OH scout coming in in the rear. Will get its minigun on target. There's a fire team 84. Did some shenanigans here, but the CV is on the other side. Sniping that won't be easy for a hippie. And yeah, he has another CV uh, CP mud here that will try to get into the rear. We have a scout over here though now. Six minutes remaining. Human plays now over 100 points ahead and on the way to just push through the north. As there's nothing between the CVs of Hippie here and uh, <laughs> all the other units of human place. But the McRevel is pretty safe. And yeah, even if he gets the dead mud in there, I believe at the point where it gets there, the point advantage of human place will be too big to, for it to matter. Like this thing will still need like three, four minutes to get there. So then it only has one minute 50 or so. If the tick continues like this, team in place should win that game number one, and that makes it actually really exciting. Because if Hippie would have won this first game, um, the second game wouldn't have really mattered. Hippie would have won. But this way, the second game is really bringing it all down. As M1A1 here versus Bradley is going on. Mech rifles disengaging. Bradley getting hit. Getting killed off. M60 is moving forward. Rangers versus Engineers up in the north. As we have a couple of stingers coming in, we have five minutes remaining, 200 points advantage now, four team in place. OH scout here also in a spot where that CV, CP can't get it through, and yeah, the north should be secured soon for team in place. We have that M1A1 in here, that artillery might just drop on that. Artillery yeah, is firing on that, and once it's stressed out, the M1A1s of team in place can just roll forward and kill it. Mech rifles with their laws obviously not doing an insane amount of damage there. But the artillery for sure can make a difference here. Another CV coming in. But by now we're closing in on 300 points advantage. We're having protective units. Artillery coming in. And when anyone takes some damage. As. Yeah, it's now down to 7 hit points. That we will land soon again. And one even over here. Doesn't get hit by the law. Law now finally gets the first hit in. Okay, there we go, another hit. Slowly taking damage. As we have an M1A1 here coming around on the side. And that one will try to eat up the M1A1 on the other side. Gets good stress, gets a good hit. So that M1A1 here really can't fight that well anymore. Well, the Bradley also has to be careful. Will get one shot by the M1A1. And we are now above 300 points advantage. So, yeah, Hippie, even if he gets here, it's only a plus two, actually. Uh, would have to capture the north back. So, that's for sure not enough to turn this game around. Hippie needs more than that. This stage, three and a half minutes remaining. And until we continue to land here. The M110, not dealing an insane amount of damage, not firing quite as much as I would have liked it to see it. But, like, yeah, having that one M110 that can keep up pressure on the enemy, that can keep up the stress, quite nice. It's... Maybe a slight bit too weak, a slight bit too inconsistent, but in general, artillery can have a role for sure. Like, yeah, if that thing gets just that slight bit more efficient, it absolutely can do the job. Uh, M1A1 in the north gets hit by a dragon. Smoke lands around here. Try to push by team in place. 400 points remaining, and this is a really, really good game by team in place. Like, playing 8th. To absolutely to its strengths, always having a combined arms at any point, and whenever Hippie got uh, moved forward, he came around, he outmaneuvered him with his slight advantage in units on the battlefield that he had in the mid-game, and uh, thanks to his units being a bit cheaper, getting some side shots, getting some kills, and then when Hippie overextended, him in place, just invested into the north, counter-pushed, slowly got in there, and yeah, by the point where it matters, 40 minutes into the game, he's 400 points up, Hippie has nothing on the battlefield anymore that can do anything back, and Team Replace will win game number one. 
And if he can get game number two done like that, that would be GG. Maps remaining, Black Forest and Vertigo. I would expect Black Forest for game number two. As Hippie, it, it will be down to Hippie's choice. And I don't see Hippie playing Vertigo, unless he has a cheese for it. Uh, whilst Black Forest allows for much more maneuver warfare. And I remember Hippie even being a fan of the old Black Forest. And he is that kind of guy. Once we have a scout helicopter coming in the rear. Whilst, yeah, Dragon's moving around in the north. M113 gets the kill there. M1A1HA rolling in. Well, he, would have, he needs a draw in the series. Like, that means he would have needed two draws in both games. Like, if it would have been a draw in this game, it would have come down to the second game anyways. And yeah, now it comes down to the second game as well. Human plays on a plus two. And turtling is not that easy, actually. <laughs> like, even with third US, like, real turtling is not that easy. Team in place keeps the plus two ticking. Yeah, he is a really methodical player. We saw that with Fantix, where we saw two really methodical players playing against each other. Fantix just being that a bit, too, a bit too slow and a bit too shy to attack. Team in place has the aggression in the right moment here. And gets the W in game number one. Well played. Well played by Team in place. <laughs> Nearly a 2-1 to one KD in the end. And Sippy just desperately tried to get some points, but wasn't able to find anything. And yeah, well played here. 39 minutes, 30 seconds, and Hippie will have to bring it back in game number two. To get, he still has the shot, shot there, he only needs a draw, he had the better result in the previous weeks. Really good games there by him, so let's see how it will go in match number two. That should be quite exciting. I'm really, really looking forward to it. As I said, I would expect Hippie bringing it around to Black Forest. We'll go into a short, short break and then we're gonna be back with the game number two. Obviously, gonna give all of